the Pentium D and the Core 2 Duo, two chips that look the same but couldn't be more different under the hood. In this video, I'll be testing the slowest Core 2 Duo versus one of the faster Pentium Ds. These two CPUs were actually released around the same time in quarter 3 of 2006. Both had two cores and both ran at an 800 MHz frontside bus. Now the Pentium D had an MSRP of $163, while the Core 2 Duo's MSRP was only around $113. Also, the Duo had 2 MB less of L2 cache, but it was only a 65W CPU versus the Pentium D, which was a 95W, so it ran a lot cooler. At first glance, the Pentium D looks like it would be far more powerful and faster than the Duo. But as I said, under the hood, they were very different. The Pentium D was essentially two Pentium 4 dies on a single chip, while the Core 2 Duo was a new design incorporating both processing cores into the same die. This was far more efficient. The Pentium D was much more similar to a dual processor than a dual core. With the Pentium D, any communication between the two dies had to be done over the motherboard. However, with the Core 2 Duo, that communication could be done within the CPU itself, which was much faster and freed up a lot of bus bandwidth. Passmark shows the Pentium D as being faster than the Duo by about 100 points in its CPU benchmark. However, the memory benchmark shows the Duo pulling ahead in a couple of the tasks, bringing its memory score up nearly 60 points higher than the D. Now, forgetting about any synthetic benchmarks, let's see how they do in real-world tests. 7-Zip was very close. The Duo finished about 20 seconds sooner with a slightly higher compression speed. Cinebench was also pretty close, but the Duo again pulled ahead, finishing 3 minutes sooner with a score of 434, while the D was 37 points lower at 397. Video encoding with Handbrake was, again, very close. The Duo once again finished first at an hour 36, about 9 minutes faster than the Pentium D. Now one thing I noticed that you won't see in any of this sped up footage is that the Pentium D's encoding, you know, encoded frames per second, jumped around wildly during the encode, sometimes reaching as high as 14 frames per second and sometimes as low as 0.2, while the Duo was rather constant around 5 or 6 FPS. I tested YouTube video playback using Chrome with all hardware acceleration disabled. First, using 480p, both played okay with the Pentium D seeming to be a bit smoother. But that changed when I switched to 18060. Neither were happy about it, but it seemed like the Duo was kind of handling it just a a little bit better. I ran Heaven just to see what would happen. The GPU was pretty much maxed out in both of these tests. However, the Duo seemed to run a bit smoother. Also, the D didn't like scene changes, and it stuttered a bit each time. The final score showed that the Duo scored nearly 100 points higher and had a 4 frames per second higher average. GTA San Andreas was released about two years before either of these CPUs, so it's the type of game that may have been run on them. Even standing in the living room, you can see the difference. The Duo was over 10 FPS higher just in this scene alone. Now, out on the streets, the frame rate jumps around quite a bit, but you can still see that the Duo was uh, always about 5 to 10 FPS higher than the D. GTA 4 was released two years after the release of these CPUs, so again, it's something that was most likely played on either one of these. These are the settings that I'm using for each of the tests, and once again, the Duo shows at least 5 FPS higher. I can also say it's not just about FPS, but the input lag on the Pentium D was far greater. The Duo felt more responsive, while the D made me want to jam the keys every time I needed to turn. The benchmark shows the difference as well as the Duo scored about 7 FPS higher. GTA 5. Well, the first thing I noticed was that all the textures loaded at the start, and this was a problem with the slower Pentium D I had benchmarked before. I noticed there's no floating trees in the distance. Once in a car, the Duo again felt much more responsive than the D, and again got a better frame rate by nearly 10 FPS.
But the closer I came to town and the faster the car went, textures started going missing. First the Penny and D, and then the Duo. The difference was it seemed for some reason like the Duo was able to reload the textures faster. And of course, Portal 2. Well, it ran perfectly, but the Duo uh, often had a frame rate nearly 20 to 30 FPS higher than the D. But regardless, both ran fine and they felt fine playing it. So the Penny MD had to run at 3.4 GHz just to beat out the 1.8 GHz Core 2 Duo. Also, the Duo used less power and stayed much cooler. While filming this and playing games on the D, I could feel wafts of heat coming from the heatsink. For whatever reason, MSI couldn't pick up the CPU temp of the D, and I'm not sure why, but trust me, it, it was toasty. I wanted to test this with the fastest Penny MD. However, I couldn't find any on eBay for less than $100. I'm not about to spend $100 on a Penny MD, so the 3.4 will have to do. But I think we get the point of how bad they really were. So all that kind of leaves me a bit curious. If Intel knew that they were leaving NetBurst behind, why would they introduce a new Penny MD to compete with their new line of Core 2 Duos and price the Penny MD higher? Was the company divided and the NetBurst fanboys with an Intel kind of pushing forward to continue? I truly would love to know. I hope you found that interesting and any light out there that anyone can shed on this would be greatly appreciated. I'm sure I'm not the only one asking these questions. As always, it helps me out a lot if you could like and subscribe, and until next time, have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.